Tonight, everybody, I say praise the Lord. Give me good of woman show reaching out. Hallelujah. God bless everyone. And today, you will not go back the same in Jesus' name. When we mention the name of Jesus, hell collapses and heaven stands at attention. And in your life tonight, heaven will respond to you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight and bless your name. Thank you for what you have done, what you've been doing, and what you're doing tonight on this Sunday evening, GCK. Lord, I pray that the sun of righteousness will shine in every life. Yes. With healing in his wings, with redemption, with salvation, and with all the blessings of God that should prove yourself in every life. You are an awesome God. Yes. Awesome miracle. Yes. Awesome salvation. Awesome healing, of awesome manifestation in every life. Confirm your power, your hand in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down in the blessing of the Lord tonight. We're talking about something familiar and something not so familiar. I'm talking about, of course, you know, the theme is great possibilities through the power of Christ. I will be qualifying those possibilities every evening tonight. We're looking at the Christian's possibilities through clear conversion to Christ. Christian, that word Christian. Christian, that name Christian. Christian, that new creature Christian. Christian, the one that has conversion, connection with God, consecration to God, and then the multiplied possibilities in the Christian's life. The Christian's possibilities through clear conversion to Christ. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the almost Christian. Not there yet. Almost Christian almost persuaded now to believe almost will not avail almost is to fail almost is to be lost number one the almost christian without repentance of faith he claims to be a christian he has never repented he claims to be a Christian. He does not have faith in the foundation of salvation. Almost Christian, but without repentance of it. Number two, altogether Christian. Soul, spirit, body, life, language, appearance, activity, all together, all together, Christian with reconciliation through faith. Number three is the all time trustworthy Christian with the riches and the richness of fruits. This one, all the time at home, in the office, everywhere all time dry season rainy season all time political time 
political turmoil. Whatever is going on, all time trustworthy Christian with the richness of fruits. Let's come to number one. Number one, the almost Christian without repentance of faith. Look at Acts chapter 26 and I'm reading from verse 26. For the king, Paul was talking to the king, King Agrippa. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. What a wonderful thing that everywhere Paul the apostle went, he spoke freely. He spoke honestly. He spoke from the depth of revelation the Lord had given him. Even when he was being examined and accused, false accusation, yet he said also, I speak freely for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. Calvary was not in a corner. Christ was not in a corner. A sacrifice as they died on the cross. It was not in a corner. Those saints on the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It was not in a corner. And the preaching of that gospel, the power of that gospel, it was not in a corner. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest, verse 28, then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost, almost, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. I know them. I see them. I see the transformation in their lives. I hear their testimony. They're going from earth to heaven. I hear they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've been considering almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Verse 29. In verse 29, it says, and Paul said, I would to God. That not only thou, but all that hear me this day were both all to almost and all together Christian as I am, except these bonds. Number one, who is the almost Christian? Let the word of God tell us the almost Christian. He thinks he's a full Christian. He thinks he's on his way to heaven. But heaven says he's not there yet. He's almost a Christian. Look at 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 33. 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 33. They feared the Lord. You would have thought final. They feared the Lord. Look at this. And served their own gods. In the public, they fear the Lord. Openly, they fear the Lord. On Sundays, they fear the Lord. As they carry their Bibles along with them, they fear the Lord. As they sing the songs of Zion, they feared the Lord. But privately, in their heart, in their family, in their houses, when practical things happen, that they should show they truly fear the Lord, they served their own gods 
after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence they live after the manner of gentiles of the heathen of the pagan of the idol worshiper of the unbeliever in the public they say they belong to christ in the private in their lives they live and act as people of corruption look at verse 34 in verse 34 unto this day unto this day after their infant baptism unto this day after their church confirmation unto this day after returning from jerusalem unto this day after having their names in the register of a church unto this day they do after their former manners they fear not the Lord. They reverence not the Lord. They respect not the Lord. They obey not the Lord. Neither do they after their statutes or their ordinances. After the law and the commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob. Whom he named Israel that they are almost Christian. Christian by mouth, Christian by name, but the nature, the, the attitude, the disposition, the character, the behavior does not show they have any connection with Christ. Look at verse 40. In verse 40, how be it, they did not hack him. How many sermons they listen to? And how many things they know about the history of the church, about the foundation of the church, about the establishment of the church, and about how the first church in their village in their town was built. They know about that, but they did not hack in, repent, and believe the gospel. Uh -uh. They did not listen to that one. Come out! From among them, and be you separate, says the Lord, they will not listen to that one. Be a new creature, a new creature in Christ, and let the goodness of God, the grace of God, the power of the blood of the Lamb, let that power work in your life. They did not hack him, but they did after their former manner. In verse 41, verse 41, so these nations feared the Lord and served the graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. What a pity that somebody can attend a crusade and we read so many verses of the Bible and we talk of the change that Christ can make in that person's life and yet unto this day, unto this time, it continues after the former manner, the almost Christian without repentance or faith. Look at Titus chapter 1. Reading there from verse 16 in Titus chapter 1, verse 16, they profess that they know God, they profess, they declare, they testify, they go about. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian everywhere they go. Uh, which religion do you belong to? I am a Christian. Have you repented? <laughs> they don't know about that one. Do you have faith in Christ? They don't know about that. Have you believed well, from the depth of your heart that Christ and Christ alone is your Savior and apart from Him, there's no other salvation. And you don't go behind to go and consult all those dark powers that's the christian but the almost christian they profess that they know god but in works they deny him the way they walk the way they do what they do in their offices 
Are they not the people that join all the corruption in their offices? The people who say that I'm a Christian and they profess that they know God. Are they not the people that tell us lies? The people that are hypocritical and the people that join all the corruption in the nation. It says they profess that they know God but he works. They deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate almost christian in second timothy chapter 3 second timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 5 in verse 5 it tells us having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away in the public as you see them you won't think of any other th this man must be a christian this woman must be a christian and the way and the way she sings uh, you know when she is on out in the kitchen she's singing amazing grace how sweet the sound in uh, you know anywhere she is in a vehicle she's even singing uh, it shall be well it shall be well and you'll think look at that christian sitting by your side but they have a form of godliness but they deny the power of godliness there's no power of godliness in them to live a different life a distinct life a life that glorifies the lord letting their light shine before me so that men who see them and men who know them who know them intimately will glorify god for them it says from search turn away look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says ever learning ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth they're ever learning they don't miss their one sunday worship service in their church and they don't miss any kind of uh, you know event christian event they are always there and they're ever learning but the regenerating power of christ has not worked in them not able to come to the knowledge of the truth tonight everything will change in your life yeah. you know i have to tell you where you are before i can pull you up and take you to the place you will be you will be there yeah. i will be there and everything will hear about christ the savior about Christ the Redeemer will walk in every one of our lives and hearts in Jesus' name. The almost Christian without repentance of faith. Let me come to number two. You are coming to number two. I can't hear you. You will come to number two in Jesus' name. The all together Christian with reconciliation through faith. All together, all together, anytime, anywhere, as the grace of God, as the blood of Christ, as the goodness of God enters into your life tonight. I said tonight, you will come from the camp of the almost and then you come into the congregation of the all together christian we're coming back to acts chapter 26 and i'm reading from verse 28 and verse 29 then agrippa said unto paul almost thou persuadest me to be a christian he said that openly 
He said that before Paul. He said that before his own wife. And all the people that are there, and all those people, they nodded their heads. They said, very good. I hope Agrippa will understand that listening and sitting down quietly, being attentive to Paul, has not made him a Christian. And examining the Christian values and the Christian virtues, I hope Agrippa will understand that you consider that, you think of that, you meditate on that. Meditation alone, consideration alone has not made him an altogether Christian. And so then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost that persuades me to be a christian now paul now said in verse 29 in verse 29 and paul said i would to god i would i would i pray that god will walk on you and walk on your heart and walk on your mind and walk on your disposition i would to god that not only thou but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together almost and all together you have to make up your mind because salvation is only in Christ you have to make up your mind to get to heaven and to escape hell only one way that can be done that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because however good you are, however generous you are, however educated you are, however high you are, however elevated you are, all that cannot save. What saves? Who saves? No other name. The name of Jesus, the earlier you make up your mind, the better. So that, as Paul said, you will not only be almost, but altogether a Christian such as I am. Except these bonds. What Paul was saying is, I am altogether a Christian. I'm suffering persecution. These bonds are there and he invited them that they too will be like he is an altogether Christian. But he prayed for them that they will not have the persecution he was having. Altogether Christian, how? By reconciliation with God through Christ in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 reading there from verse 18 it tells us and all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ Paul the apostle said reconciled me to himself by Jesus Christ. Look at Timothy, look at Titus, and look at Epaphroditus, look at all the people around him with Silas and John Mark. He reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. That's how we became altogether Christian. And he said, He wants that for you. He wants that for everyone here, everyone online, everyone on radio, everyone on the television, everyone hearing the word tonight. He wants that same reconciliation for you. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation, verse 19, in verse 19, to which, that is to say that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them that is when you come to Christ all the guilt of your sin he'll wipe away all the pain of your sin and the punishment of the past sin he will wipe away and all the consequences of sin which means Finally, 
perishing forever in the lake of fire it will wipe every sin away because when you are reconciled to the Lord, He will not impute your past trespasses unto you. And He has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The word of reconciliation. Any other thing we're preaching about may give us knowledge. You're talking about the dimensions of the ark of Noah knowledge and you talk about how deep the red sea was how wide the red sea was the origin the source of the red sea flowing like this before the children of israel crossed over knowledge you talk about high, how high the wall of jericho was and when it was built and who built it history history of the wall of jericho that doesn't save us knowledge but the word of reconciliation what you want to hear what you want to know the word that comes into you and brings conviction and makes you to confess that jesus christ is the only savior and you want that christ to save you to change your life and to transform you and reconcile you with the almighty god that is the word that makes you an altogether Christian. And it says the word of reconciliation has been committed to us in verse 20. In verse 20, it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. Even though you hear us preachers talking, it's God that is pleading with you that is begging of you that if you will not perish be reconciled unto god we pray you we plead with you we can even kneel down before you and say please for heaven's sake please for your own sake please because of eternity be ye reconciled unto god your will I said you will. The Lord will not allow you to perish. And we preachers, that's why we came. That's why he came here. It's not to entertain you. It's not, you know, all our music people, thank God for what they are doing. They're not entertaining us. They're telling us that we need Jesus in our heart. Jesus in our life. They're telling us that at the mention of the name of Jesus, Heaven will stand at attention for your request. That's why all of us are working together and we're pleading with you that tonight, tonight will not pass you by. You will have this Christ in you, the hope of glory, and you will be an altogether Christian tonight in Jesus' name. And look at Acts chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be ye converted without conversion. You are not an altogether Christian. Going to church without repentance, you are not an altogether Christian. Having a Bible at home and having the Ten Commandments printed, hanging by your wall without repentance, you are not an altogether Christian. And having water in the bottle and praying over that water and drinking that water without repentance, you are not an altogether Christian. Belonging to the popular church in town. They said, look around, you'll find, that's my church, that's my church. And it's the greatest church in this town. The greatest church in this state. I understand, but without you personally repenting and turning to the Lord, you are not an altogether Christian. Tonight is your night. I said tonight is your night. 
all the things we are bringing about, about church, about Bible, about whatever, all those things, let's push that aside tonight so that you will not be almost a Christian but altogether a Christian. How does that happen? Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. You know, sin <clears throat> is like your shadow following you, following you. As you say, I'm a Christian. The fellow you are talking about, he sees your shadow. He sees your transgression. He sees your misbehavior. He sees your abnormal life, unbiblical life. And you say, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I hear, I see the shadow of sinfulness following after you. It is the repentance. It's the turning around. It is throwing away the yoke of sin in our lives that makes all those sins to be blotted out. When the time of refreshing, of renewal, of redemption shall come from the presence of the Lord. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, Unto you first, God having raised up his son Jesus sent him to bless you sent him to bless you tonight the heavenly father has sent Jesus to bless you you'll be blessed I will be blessed what are you there the Lord confirm it in Jesus name the father God in heaven sent Jesus to bless you. What's the blessing in turning away every one of you from his iniquities? That's what makes us all together Christian. I'm coming to number three. Number three, we're looking at the all time trustworthy Christian with richness of fruits. Richness of fruits. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight narrow gate. The gate that will not take you and idol worship. The gate that will not take you and your crime. The gate that will not take you and your corruption you, you know when we go to church we'll go to church with everything we have and all those things corruption is there we go into the church with that and, and you know the the transgression is there we go in with the transgression even the concubine we will say i'm going to church concubine will you follow me and we go in but the concubine, you can enter any church, you can go to any church, you can go to any crusade, you can go anywhere with all those wagons of sin and transgression. But to get to the kingdom of God, enter ye in at the straight gate, at the narrow gate that will not take you and your corruption, that will not take you and your concubine, that will not take you and any evil in your life. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. That's the way of liberty, the way of you know, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I can do anything. That's a broad way. And it leads to destruction. And many there be which go in there. Then in verse 14, in verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, eternal life. And few there be that find it. You'll be among the few tonight. The past rejected. The past thrown away. A new life of renewal, 
of redemption of righteousness in your life tonight in Jesus name Luke chapter 3 we're reading from verse 8 in Luke chapter 3 verse 8 bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance that's the altogether Christian if you want to show that you're a real Christian an altogether Christian all time Christian you come to Christ nothing in my hand I bring simply to the cross I clinch rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in you could my tears forever flow and my zeal no respite no and my gifts and my sacrifices be very much abundant all these for sin cannot atone thou and thou alone must save and so you come to christ the only savior you come to christ the eternal redeemer you come to christ and you have him in your heart in your life as the only savior and after christ has accepted you and you have received the salvation of the lord you go forth now bring him forth the fruit worthy of repentance and that is what is taking place tonight in jesus name and you will bear fruit i will bear fruit galatians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 22 galatians chapter 5 verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love the love of christ the love of god will be implanted in your heart joy the joy of salvation will be there when you have a clear mind a free mind a peaceful mind that my sins are forgiven he has put my sin in the depths of the sea the joy of salvation will be yours tonight in jesus name and peace peace no turmoil no commotion no guilt no condemnation you're peaceful on the inside and when you are peaceful on the inside you'll be at peace with your wife you'll be at peace with your husband you'll be at peace with your children the peace that come from salvation will be an ongoing refreshing thing in your life and you know your face that was always angry as if you are fighting with life but the peace of god come and then long suffering you'll not be you know like a short suffering person a little thing will get on your nerves and then you blow up your fuse is blown up and once your fuse is blown up darkness everywhere but there's long suffering you say father forgive them they don't know what they do father have mercy on them they don't know that they are hindering themselves they are not concentrating on improving their lives they're only concentrating on you that they want to do something that will jolt you father forgive them there will be gentleness gentleness your hands your fingers and now uh, the experience is that gentleness you know sometimes you shake hands with somebody and he holds you as if it's going to break the bones of your fingers no gentleness there but now your life is gentle your language is gentle your disposition is gentle and goodness and goodness now you're good any little thing you have or how much you have you see another person suffering the fruit of redemption and the fruit of reconciliation with God is that you are good to everyone faith fidelity faithfulness we have that in verse 23 in verse 23 it says meekness meekness there's no pride anymore there's no bossy attitude 
world anymore. And there is no kind of ruling over other people with real wicked force. Now there is meekness, there is temperance. Temperance means there's self-control. You are not controlled by leaves, you are not controlled by alcohol, you are not controlled by animals, you are not controlled by temper, you are not controlled by anything. Christ the one who says, I am meek and lowly, and you receive me, and you find rest for your soul. He is now the one that comes to control your life. And you become, you become, you become a Christian all the time. A Christian all the time. You don't put on Christianity as a cloak and then put it off. No, it's there all the time and then all the benefits of Christ from Christ all the possibilities from Christ will now come to you salvation will enter healing will come Amen. deliverance will come victory will come in your life in Jesus name number one the almost Christian. No, I don't want to stay there. The all together Christian. That is what I want to be. And the all time trustworthy Christian that will be loaded by with the blessings of God. That is where I want to be. I invite you tonight and I say the gate is open and the way is made clear in your life tonight as you surrender absolutely and completely unto Christ our Savior. Praise the Lord. Tonight, you become an altogether Christian. Where are you? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless your hands. And God transports you out of the almost. And then you become altogether, all-time Christian that has record in heaven. It's bowed and eyes closed. Once again... His call comes to you. Once again, His goodness beckons on you. Once again, the grace of God calls you out of your past into a present experience of becoming altogether a Christian. You want that grace? You want that love, you want that conversion, and you want that goodness of the Lord, wherever you are, you raise up your hand. Amen. Wonderful, that wonderful, wonderful. There, raise up that hand, raise up that hand. Don't stay behind, don't be satisfied with almost a Christian, but come tonight into the kingdom of God and become the all together Christian. Raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, you've taken the decision, and nothing will turn you back to the realm, to the camp of the almost. But you remain in the covenant with God of the altogether Christian. Wherever you are, you raise up that hand. Online, raise up your hand. You are watching over the, over the television, raise up your hand. You are listening in, uh, over the radio, raise up your hand there. As you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Please, please stand up. They be reconciled unto God. And then all the sins of your life, you, you leave them behind. The corruption, the concubine, and the fornication, and the, and the idolatry and the adultery and the drunkenness leave everything behind and say Lord I come Lord I come without any hypocrisy Lord I come without any insincerity Lord I come without hiding any sin underneath my jacket Lord I come Man, come. Woman, come. Lady, come. Gentlemen, come. Everyone, come. And the Lord will receive you now. As we are standing up, just in a word, also say, Lord, I come. I leave my sin. I leave my evil habits. 
and Lord, I come. And he said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he says, Anyone that comes to me, I will in no wise cast off. He receives all that come. Let's pray together now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, thank you, because it's your desire, it's your decision, it's your love that you reconcile everyone to yourself by the Lord Jesus. And I pray that there'll be a real, full reconciliation of everyone standing there, standing here, standing everywhere, wanting Jesus at the all in all in their lives. Give them salvation in Jesus' name. And the victory, the triumph that comes with that salvation, victory over sin. Triumph over the evil life of the past. Give them the victory and the triumph in Jesus' name. And Lord, write their names in the book of life in heaven. And let even the angels of God in heaven rejoice on their behalf. Because they have repented and they are no more almost Christians. They are now all together Christian. Confirm that transformation in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. Special Obomosho amen. God bless you. Keep on standing. Uh, we call on our officiating uh, overseer tonight. He will, you know, give us all the instruction and then we'll follow and uh, come back and there will be great multiplied miracles in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. You are welcome into the family of God. Please cancel us, get to the people, take the following information from them, ensure that the information you are collecting is correct. The names, their phone numbers, their email addresses, the place of their abode, their residence. Please if you have not been reached, keep standing. They are coming to you. Counselors, member of the choir, please let's spread to all the feet under the tree, behind the feet on the streets. They are all over the places. Let's take down those information. And make sure that those information are correct. Check the number of the digits in their phone. If you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after this pastor's message this evening, there's a link gckhq.org slash connect below your player click it and fill the form so we might assist you further in your new work in Christ if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ send your name your phone number your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I repeat plus two three four 
915-444-9263. Counselors, please, let's move fast. And let's wait for miracle prayer if you are not raising up your hand for the altar call, bow down your heads and be praying that God will meet you at the point of your need tonight. Pray that God will touch you and reform you and transform you. We have this announcement that there will be a special meeting launched out with Jesus for all those who gave their life to Christ on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, and today, by 3 p.m. tomorrow, at Ogomosho Grammar School Hall, on this crusade ground. Special packages await you there. Please attend. Counselors, Let's ensure we have covered everyone. After taking down the information, stay with them. Don't come back to your seat. You will assist them in the during the period of the miracle prayer and bring them out for testimony. So stay with them after collecting those information and ensure that we covered every area by my right hand, under the trees, by the roadside, at the back of the feet. Let's cover everywhere. Let's listen to this announcement. There will be a special online banquet for all those who are watching online who gave their lives to Christ, it will take place on Sunday, 6th August, 2023. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor, the convener of this crusade, will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. For Gomo Shop Believer Banquet, it's going to take place at Deeper Life Bible Church, Okeanu, Ogomosho, on Sunday 6, August 2023. Counselors, if you are done, can you wave your flag? By my right hand side, Counselor, if you are true, can you wave your flag? At the middle, the supervisor should be indicate if you are finished. By my left hand side of the feed, let's be fast, let's be fast, but let's also do it thoroughly. And all you write should be in capital letters. Let your writing be legible. Please, let's ensure that the information we are collecting is complete and uh, correct. It will further help us to help those converts in their new walk with Christ. Supervisors, please indicate if you are finished. Counselor by my right hand side. Choir members, stay with them. Don't come back. Stay with them so that you can bring them out during the prayer of miracles, miracle prayers. 
Okay, I can see the flag there. God bless you. At the middle of the hall. If you are finished, can I see the flag up? Counselor, wave the flag. Okay, God bless you. I can see the flag. But my left hand side of the auditorium here. If you are finished, can I see the flag? Let's continue. Let's do it quickly. Let's complete it. Under the tree. God bless you. By the left hand side of the hall, let's quickly round up our accounts, our taking down of the information. Please, the counselors to submit the slip to the supervisor. And those counselors should stay with the people. You will have to bring them out after the miracle prayer. Are we not done in the left hand side of the auditorium? Counselor, can you wave your flag? Okay, God bless you. Let's rise up on our feet now. It's a miracle time. Amen. It is miracle time. Say that. It's my miracle time. It will come to you in Jesus' name. You raise up the hand and you lay the hand, the other hand, where you have the sickness, the challenge. And thank you, counselors, members of the choir, ushers, that were staying with them. See those who are raising up their hands and see the challenges they have. So, at the final amen, you are not just leave them, you interact with them. It's done, it's done. And then you bring them out tonight, miracle time. Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we glorify you tonight because you are an awesome God. You do awesome, great miracles in every life in Jesus' name. We announce to every sickness, we announce to every disease at the mention of the name of Jesus, heaven stands at attention. And miracles pour down from heaven upon everyone in Jesus' name. Demon of insanity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Incurable disease of cancer, of ulcer, kidney problem, liver problem, appendicitis, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. The fire burning in the brain, burning inside the body. Lord, I put an end to that fire in Jesus' name. The issue of blood, running, running, running blood. Lord, I pray that it stops right now in Jesus' name. Long-standing disease and long-standing problem. You've taken it there, you've taken it everywhere, and it's still there. I pray that tonight will be the final end to that long-standing problem, sickness, disease, in Jesus' name. All the pains in your joints, your elbow, your shoulder, your hip, your knees, your ankle, every pain that incapacitates you, hindering you to move freely. I pray the Lord touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Every problem, every infirmity, every disease, every plague, and every curse that anybody puts on you, 
Tonight, they're destroyed. Tonight, they're removed. Lord, I come now. Everyone, everyone to the right, to the left, to the center, to the back. Those online and those on radio and those on the television. The flow of the power of healing. The manifestation of the performance of healing. Lord, in every life, make it real in Jesus' name. This is a miracle time. My brother, it's your miracle time. My sister, daughter there, it's your miracle time. My boy, my daughter, my girl there, it's your miracle time. A confirmation in your life. Confirmation in your life. Testimony in your mouth. It is done in Jesus' name. Check up. It's gone. Check up. You are healed. Amen in your life. 